Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our ISTQB AI tester certification. We are in chapter 4 talking about ML, about the data and we will be looking forward to continue with the part 2 of 4.1 which is data preparation as part of the ML workflow. So in our previous tutorial, we understood about what are the basic outline of data preparation and we also covered the two major parameters of it or major activities that was data acquisition and the data pre-processing. Today we'll be continuing ahead with the feature engineering which is to talk about what exactly does it really take to uh, do a feature selection and feature extraction as a part of our discussion. So feature engineering generally gets broken down into two subsegments, that is feature selection and feature extraction, where feature selection, uh, a feature is an attribute or property reflected in the data. The feature selection involves the selection of those features which are most likely to contribute to model training and prediction. In practice, it often includes the removal feature that are not expected which means or that or are not wanted to have any effect on the resultant model. By removing irrelevant information, which we refer to it as noise, feature selection can reduce overall training times, prevent overfitting, and increase accuracy, make models more generalizable. I think it's more about that what are the details of the information what you are looking forward to train the model on. Sometimes when you do uh, acquire data and do the pre-processing where you are doing the data cleansing or kind of scrubbing and preparing all the required information, sometimes you do shortlist and remove the unwanted information which you don't want to train the ML data with. For example, there could be a hazy image of a dog or probably you wouldn't be talking about the angles which are really not necessary to identify a dog because you can take different like you know 10d you have 10d possible to take a picture of the dog and but not every angle certainly matters to confuse your ml model so the feature selection is more about filtering all those features which you really need to uh, utilize to train the model and which helps the system to be very very sure about the predictions because sometimes the unwanted data or which we re uh, refer to it as noise, which is a standard terminology in training ML data, ML model is going to be confusing your ML model altogether. So removing the unwanted data or ir irrelevant information is what we are referring to, having a shortlisted list of feature selected values. Talking about feature extraction on the other side, this involves the derivation of informative and non-redundant features from the existing features. This resulting data set is a typically smaller and can be used to generate an ML model of equivalent accuracy more cheaply and more quickly. So I think that's just going to be more of like extension of the feature selection that we are talking about the derivation of more informative material uh, including the non-redundant features from the existing feature altogether and then we will be talking about putting that into the right set of training data set. So in parallel to these data preparation activities, exploratory data analysis, which is EDA, is also typically carried out to support the overall data preparation task. This includes performing data analysis to discover trend inherent in the data and using data visualization to present or represent the data in a visual format by plotting the trend in the data. So again, now these are more of like the data analytics job where a data preparator would look forward to prepare the data in the desired format which the ML model can read and understand. More importantly, we will be talking about the visual formats which you might be using to train the data model and then we will certainly be filtering out the required precise set of information which is required. So whatever you shortlist, whatever you pre-process or decide at the end of the end, that, okay, these are my final set of data, they need to be framed in a format what my ML model going to read and understand. The next topic we are covering today is called as challenges in the data preparation. The challenges, of course, any good thing does not come with any kind of challenges which we need to take into account without which those 
good things can turn into problems, right? So given that you have at least the understanding of challenges or you have the awareness of what are the challenges which we face in data preparation, you can prevent them to happen or at least you can plan for it that how to tackle and overcome them. So some of the challenges related to data preparation are mentioned here. Let's have a look on that. The number one, the need of the knowledge of the application domain, the data and its properties, the various techniques associated with data preparation. So number one thing is of course the type of application domain you are talking about, like does it belong to automotive, um, a Tesla making a decision on its own, right? There's an AI based system running behind the screen. Or you're talking about anything else which is which could be a gambling industry uh, software which is going to make decisions that whether the person wins the game or not. And then the data and its properties, of course, the type of data and this attributes which are supposed to be read by the models. And the third is the various techniques associated with those data preparation. So of course, the right techniques to be utilized is the most important thing. Thus, it is seen as a challenge that people may fail to take a call on this and that would result into having a precise information. The next one is the difficulty of getting high quality data from multiple sources. Uh, given that AI based systems and ML models are still very, very young in the market, you may not get really appropriate amount of data or quality data to train the ML models at this point of time. So it's always going to be a challenge until unless we have a good stabilized environment on ML models or AI based systems, which could be considered as a stable thing. Also the difficulty of automating data pipeline and ensuring that the production data pipeline is both scalable and has reasonable performance efficiency. So point is like again the, the pipeline to collect the real-time data back into the uh, data centers to kind of like uh, refine and understand that how this data could be useful in uh, refeeding the ML models or retraining or sometime to understand what exactly is going on. So data analytics again like would be something one of the challenges uh, with respect to the uh, data preparation. The cost associated with data preparation which is equally always a challenge no matter what you talk about the cost is always a constraint which could be seen as a challenge to complete more work and more importantly this is not about a mobile application or a software application. This is about building up an AI based system and they are certainly expensive at this point of time. Not giving sufficient priority for to checking for defects introduced in the data pipeline during data preparation. Uh, it's more of like an ignorance that the team may not pay a much of attention to what kind of negligence we are having when we are talking about data preparation and the wrong data being pushed to ML models which could result into certainly a big drawback of it. And the introduction to the sample biases, which we have discussed earlier, like what are the typical biases which we face when we talk about training the models and the AI-based system. So that could also be one of the challenges that having a taxonomy. Uh, in, when we talk about the regular applications of software, we have been doing this for a long time and we do have a very well-established defect taxonomy available with us which can give us a list of typical defects from a particular perspective that is maybe a domain or maybe a kind of like type of product. But when you talk about ML models, of course, getting a taxonomy or getting a kind of uh, typical list of defects is really hard to get at this point of time. So having an understanding about what is so we are supposed to get when we talk about training uh, an ML model is very, very difficult at this point of time. So I think we had a really good understanding of the both the things. If uh, that was all good, I hope that would make really good sense and understanding about what it takes to prepare the data for ML model. And that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.